Yolo Park sent me the G1 version of Starscream. Look at how beautiful this box is. We gotta open this guy up, see what he's all about. What do you say? You ready to go? One of my absolute favorite figures this year is the Yolo Park G1 Optimus Prime. Now, this guy doesn't transform at all. He's a non-transforming transformer. It more than makes up for it in the ability to showcase so many impressive details about Optimus. That is what I'm gonna be looking for with Starscream. The thing about Yolo Park products is that they are an assembly kit. You have to put together the different pieces that all make the figure come to life. This is somewhere in between a Gunpla as well as one of the Marvel Legends Build-A-Figures. And honestly, I like this because not only do you see all of the parts that go into the creation of action figures, you get a sense of where all of the articulation, where all of the different pieces can move, bend, twist, and articulate. Now we have our Starscream all assembled just like the G1 Optimus. There is so much to love about this. There's three different faceplates with Starscream here. There is blast effects for his cannons, for the rocket boosters on his feet. We gotta talk a lot about just the detail that went into this, as well as some hidden features, because when I initially started playing with this figure, well, that's where things kind of got interesting. One of the first things you notice about Starscream is all of the weathering on him. It's done on purpose to make this feel like a more lived-in action figure. This isn't a pristine Decepticon. This is a Decepticon who has seen battles and has possibly double-crossed Megatron once or twice. It isn't just on the front of Starscream either. If we turn him around, you can see all of the paneling on his wings has a nice grime to it. And it, it is kind of like a grime, but honestly, it makes it all stand out. If we just look at that part right there, I don't know too much about jets, but I assume that is a part that gets dirty. And then if we look at his feet, you can see paint chipping there. Again, this is by design. This isn't something that, oh, they forgot to do something at the factory. No, this, this was intentionally added. Of course, he has the double jointed knees. He has the double jointed elbows. This is a very poseable figure. When I initially put Starscream together, it felt like he was a little more stiff. He wasn't as, I would say, flexible, malleable as the Optimus Prime that I first initially got my taste of Yolo Park stuff with. But because I remember putting him together, I knew that there were extra joints and swivels and things like that. I know this is gonna help you. So if you take a look, there is a drop hip on that. So if you are having trouble posing Starscream a little bit, just remember that these little pieces, this skirt around him does kind of hinge out. And then you also have the drop hip to get a lot more range with the lower half, which is great to see because he is a chunkier figure in the feet. You can see that these rocket boosters right here do provide some extra bulk to him. So you're gonna want that extra range of movement when it comes to getting him into a position. His wings can hinge back, they can flap forward, which again was something that was sticky. It was a little tight when I first got him out of the box. Now this wasn't an assembly part, this was already pre-assembled, so that one did take a little figuring out. Cannons on his shoulders are on ball joints, so you do get a nice range. You can move these in any sort of direction. And yes, just like Optimus Prime, he has finger articulation. He has a thumb that moves independently, a pointer finger, and then the other three fingers move in unison. Now, when it comes to the blast effects, they pull double duty. You have the cone shape blast effect, which sockets into the laser beam blast effect that can then socket onto the end of the cannon. And then if you take off that cone shape blast effect, you can plug them into the bottom so it looks like he's taking off boosting in robot form. Now here's the other secret that I want you to know is that on his chest, these can open up and he has access to the missiles. There are corresponding blast effects there that socket on right where they meet. Do you see that little T intersection right there? That is where you plug in those blast effects. That is the secret I wanted to tell you because it took me a while to think of where that would actually socket on. On the box it says this is a die cast figure and it is in a sense. There are some die cast parts, but a lot of it is still also plastic. The die cast parts do add some heft to him, so it does feel like a substantial figure. And comparing him to Optimus Prime, because he does have some larger wingspans here, it feels like this is the slightly heavier figure, but it could just be my imagination. The one thing to look out for is that these parts right here, these vents, are die cast, so it does increase, or I guess it moves up his center of gravity, so if you're trying to pose him, 
that is going to be a point of contention for you because there is some extra weight well above his head. One of the areas where I did have another issue with the articulation is the feet. There is toe articulation, so that is cool to see. Where you're missing out is the ankle. Because there is a guard over both of these sides of the ankle, there is very limited movement. There's kind of a hinge like that, so he could kind of do some crazy splits, but I haven't quite figured out exactly what I want to do with that. The overall attention to detail on Starscream is impressive. One small little area that I was just impressed with, like it didn't need to be there, but I was impressed with it, is on his back. When you bend him forward, and he does have a crunch forward, is that you see these pistons that reveal themselves when you lean him forward. It just gives you that sense that this is a functional robot, one that has so many gears, pistons, and things that make it a very living creature. There is so much to like about the Starscream, and this, again, is another hit for Yolo Park in their G1 Transformers line. It's a very exciting figure. I can see so many people enjoying this. This will go extremely well next to Optimus Prime, Megatron, if you have that one. I don't, but Starscream here, ooh, he's a good one. And because of that, he's gonna sit right over here by Optimus, near the vamp and the stinger. We are creating our own Transformers and G.I. Joe universe here. And if you like that thought, if you like action figures, if you like blasters and collectibles and other action-based toys, you definitely need to hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button, whatever it takes to get more videos because more videos are a coming. Now, would I recommend you go get this Starscream? If you are a Transformers fan and you like that G1 look, absolutely get this figure. The articulation, the attention to detail, and just the fun things that you can discover by assembling one of these figures is just plain cool. But I have to warn you, if you get Starscream, you're gonna wanna jump back and get Optimus, you're gonna wanna get Megatron, and probably whatever else from this G1 line that they'll have for us in the future because they're just so, so well done. And if I had to say there was one giant issue with Starscream, it is the stand that comes with him. I can't, for the life of me, figure out how to clamp it around his waist with the wings the way they're structured. I just don't know how to do it, but I wanna hear from you. Do you like those non-transforming Transformers from Yolo Park? I personally do. I think it gives so much more detail in terms of what the robot mode looks like. You just get a really good sense of what the figure jumping out of the cartoon would look like in your hands. But I also appreciate a good transforming transformer as well. They're just different. They're different. So I want to hear your thoughts on the matter. So for me and Starscream, that's all I know today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later.